people is gone. And, you know, for a lot of companies, HR is not respected. And I wanted to make sure to me, HR is the heartbeat of any organization. And if HR is doesn't have a good heartbeat, then it filters out to everybody else. Yeah, I, I feel like th- these conversations come up a lot um, during during my podcast uh-huh, because there's there's these HR many times, whether it's true or not. It's just perception. They're on this island mm. many times. And then what you talked about is the strategic piece, this collaborative piece. Mm-hmm. How do you get these, um, these, these HR folks that may be sort of, even if it's, if, even if it's multiple people, they're like, how do you get them at the table with the, with the rest of the leaders where they really belong? Mm-hmm. How, how do you get them to be heard? And to, you know, make sure that they're presenting the value that they bring to the right. org. Yeah, I mean, it, that that is a very good point of how HR leaders and how HR team members can be strategic is to know how what you do fits into the overall organization. You know, to know, okay, not just salary, but salary benefits. Okay, if I'm a strategic thinker, are there ways to increase my benefits at a lower level? I mean, a lower cost. Um, Am I able to, when you're talking about influencing and being collaborative, that means I need to know about finance. I need to be meeting with these individuals one-on-one and and get myself, if I'm not at the table, get myself invited to the table. Um, And then when you're at the table, speak up because there, the HR also has to be the one to say, this is going to hurt or help employees. Yeah. You know, it's going to negatively impact them or, you know, it will, this will enhance what we're doing now, but there's nothing worse than HR one, not being at the table, but then two, being at the table and not saying anything. Yeah. So when you get invited, don't come empty hand. Don't come. Do your homework. Yeah. It, it's almost like we were in school. Do do your homework and to know, you know, make sure that HR is on the agenda. Something from HR. Um, I've always believed that you have metrics. You know, you, you need metrics on, you know, um, days open, days to fill, you know, for recruiting. You know, you need to be aware of how many people are on leave. Yes, it's a number, but it's it's a number that means something and has a, a financial value that you can share with your colleagues. Yeah, I think that, you know, one of the uh, popular terms is like knowing your why. Yeah. But it's popular because there's truth to it. And, and, and I think um, the you know, whether you have an organization that has a hundred employees or a thousand or 10,000, people need to know the, the, the role that they're doing, how it impacts the, everyone else, right? And I think the more investment that you have, um, the more engagement that you that you receive from those folks, and you're going to get a happier, probably more productive uh, team member, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's good to ask them. What, what I've learned is that, you know, people are sitting around the table. We can come up with a whole lot of things. I mean, in my own mind, I can create a movie by myself. So I, I could just like, you know, this, the beginning and the end. But the reality is if I never ask people and get their insight and input, I, I don't know. I've just made stuff up. I just said, oh, well, you know, I think we should do this for team members. If people don't like pizza or don't want a pizza party, <laughs> why are you going to throw a pizza party? You know, yeah. 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 <laughs> so you got to know what drives them and what they want. 25% of them lactose intolerant. Yeah. <laughs> the other, the, another 25% glu- gluten intolerant. You ain't, what kind of pizza are you going to have? They don't right. even want pizza. Yeah, right. or vegan, or you know, yeah. Right. So, so I think that there's um, 
what I'm hearing from you and what I've heard from other HR leaders is it's these it's these silos that we operate in. Mm-hmm. And just from a generic communications, you know, you talk about this, you know, this movie, you know, we can tell ourselves a story and all we need is one person to mm-hmm. agree with us. Mm-hmm. And now it's true. Mm-hmm. Not the person that I got the problem with. Mm-hmm. Or the perceived problem, but my friend who say, yeah, yeah, Bex, yeah, yeah, Sandy, yeah, Sandy, yeah, she, she sounds like she tripping. Now we never yeah. talked to Sandy. Yep. Because because communication, and you mentioned this earlier, is not being able to speak well, which I've learned. It don't matter how you speak if, if it's not connecting with the audience that you're trying mm-hmm. to connect with, right? 